So system configuration, this is where we're going to create some default um, config files, um, uh, some configuration that adjusts how the uh, system works and so on, how it boots. So I will be referring to another machine just for reference because some of these settings obviously don't configure systems that often to remember some of the settings so I will be uh, referring and cropping from another machine so if it appears that I'm just typing in stuff and you can't see where it's come from it's because it's uh, coming from a different screen and not, not from the LFS manual so the first thing we've got to do is install some boot scripts and the LFS team have kindly created some for us so extract this file lfs dash boot scripts and then there's a date after it it does change every now and then you can see this last one's um, from june but it's the most recent one so it's fine for lfs 11 and all we do with this is make install and that's done we can tidy that up So there's a bit here about device and module handling. Um, it's all automated now. There's some stuff to read there. How to manage devices. Um, it says here there's a script been uh, included that creates initial roles, so we can run that. And it says here to cat this file here that's been created to find out what the name of the um, network devices and you can see this is the name here ENP3 S0 F, F0 so I'm actually going to make a note of that to save me having to keep recalling it so ENP3 S0 F0 um, you can, I think it works, if you do IPA, that should show the current network adapter as your current system sees it, and obviously um, Endeavor OS, it's modern, so it will be behaving in the same way, so you can see it's also found and is using the same network port with the same name, and that's the good thing about the persistent naming, is that it's based on the hierarchy hardware wise um, so it will never change because that network port is hardwired internally the way the machine has been built so it will always be called that on this machine on another machine it might be called something differently because of the way the hardware has been um, configured so it's a lot better than just having ETH0 for example um, especially if you've got more than one network port which uh, a lot of motherboards do these days um, obviously the Mac doesn't it's only got one I'm not sure if the Mac Pros have more than one or not I don't know um, but it's certainly uh, very useful especially in uh, environments where there's more than one port so you know exactly which one you're talking to um, if you do want to use the old way it says here about um, using that it can be restored by adding net.if names equals zero on the kernel command line so that's that bit there what's this bit here um, oh yeah this is all about um, CD-ROM links um, it's shown this command here will show you what um, the UDEF scripts will use for finding the CD-ROM device. There's no CD-ROM in the Apple Mac, or certainly not this one. <coughs> but you can run that if you wish to, and it shows you also about dealing with duplicate devices. Uh, for example, if you had two CD-ROMs, or you know, um, two sound cards, maybe. So I won't go over that here because the Mac hasn't got it. It's um, kind of a bit of an advanced to topic, really. So what I'm going to do now is to K 
carry on with the network, well, configuration files. The first one is the network configuration. And we can quickly create that file like this. And then the next thing to do is to actually edit that file because there are some things that need to be altered in here. So we can just do use VI, our VI that we've built, etc sysconfig. Um, and that's the file we want to edit. Now, actually, um, as you saw, it's defaulted to calling it .eth0. Um, now, I'm not using that. As I've said, I'm using the um, persistent naming. So I need to change the name of this file to ifconfig.enp3. S zero F zero. Uh, that's the one I want to call it. So ifconfig.eth zero to ifconfig emp three S zero F F zero. Now I can edit it. Uh, ifconfig. And here I also need to change the name of the interface. So once again, I type in ENP 3S 0F0. And it's worth just double checking that because it's quite a uh, jumble of letters and numbers. Um, obviously, if you were to use it a few times, it would um, become a bit uh, more recognizable because um, you you get to recognize it, you get to learn it. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to um, actually, I'm not sure, come to think of it, I might actually change this back, uh, save that. I'm not sure how the startup scripts work. They may, I'm not sure if they look for something called ifconfig.eth0 or if, or something, sorry, I'm not sure if they look for anything beginning with ifconfig to start or if they're looking for anything beginning with eth0. I would assume it's looking for ifconfig. Um, yeah, I'll leave that at the moment. Just And if we don't get the network up when we boot, then Obviously, it's looking for .eth0 or .wlan for wireless and so on. So, um, yeah, I have to try and remember that. Um, I'm just going to check what IP address I've got set aside for this machine because I can't remember it. Um, So, sorry, just bear with me. Um, okay. Um, right. Okay, 57... Oh no, 157, sorry. Right, uh, so I'll edit this file again and some changes I need to make here. This is the IP address of this machine. So I just need to make some adjustments to that number there. So I'm going to use 157. And the gateway, my gateway is that one. And therefore the broadcast address will also be a zero there. So you'd have to um, find out what your router is using um, and use those uh, numbers that it is using to get that to work. So that should be fine. Save that and we'll move on and need to create a etc resolve file here. So once again, we can copy what they've got here. It's probably the quickest way. And then edit it. 
to make appropriate changes. So domain, put your domain name here. Um, I believe if you're not using a domain, you can put anything in there uh, or even leave it blank possibly. I'm not a great expert on networking. Um, I do use a domain because I've got a, a name server. So I'm going to put that in. Uh, which is insert. Yeah, I'm on the insert. And then the name server IP address. Now, generally, you'd get this either from your router or maybe another machine you could copy. Um, I'm only going to use one name server. Um, but it's just the Google ones there. There's others like OpenDNS. Um, there's several other, other free ones. If you search for open or free DNS servers, you'll get a selection coming up. Um, which you can use. It's probably advisable to have um, some backup ones. Um, I don't use them because my name server provides the backup ones and in theory there shouldn't be any problem getting to the name server. So that's that file done. Save that. Now we need to um, configure the host name. So we could probably do this by just copying this, drop the E off there, and just editing it in one go. So I've called this machine iMac. So now if I cat etc host name, you can see that's going to be the name of the machine when it boots. And then there's an etc hosts file here. So again, there's a few settings here. Let's edit this separately vi etc hosts now um, this uh, address here uh, it always throws me because I don't recognize it but searching on the internet is it's only required by certain um, distributions I think to resolve name servers as far as I remember it's not a particularly standard IP address, so I tend to remove that line from this machine. Uh, sorry, from the um, LFS installations. You can leave it in if you wish to, um, but it's not normally needed. Um, likewise, I don't use IP6, IPv6, so I also delete these lines as well as I don't use them. Obviously, if you're using IPv6, then you may want to leave them in. So the only thing I need to do is to actually edit this line here. The top line is the local host, the, like the loopback address, so leave that as it is. Um, and this one I need to set to the same um, IP address that I set before, which was 0, 0157. Uh, the fully qualified domain name, well, that will be the host name, which is iMac followed by the domain name, so in my case it was mynet.org then the host name by itself and then any other aliases that this machine might be known by and basically what this is doing is saying this IP address resolves to imac.mynet.org or imac or any other name I could give it, I could call it Fred, Bob, Joe, whatever and if I want to do that I would just add those names in afterwards and maybe Fred .mynet.org and any time I refer to a machine called fred.mynet.org or Bob or Fred it will resolve it to this particular machine that's that's how this works it's quite simple but generally it's just the host name plus the fully qualified domain name so that's that file and we can move on now to boot scripts so sysv init, we create an init tab file. It's easy enough, simple enough just to copy this. Um, you'll notice on the, these are the terminals that get created when the machine boots. You'll notice the first one's got no clear on it. Um, what that does, if that's not there, then the screen gets cleared. And if you're having problems and you want to see um, what's appeared on the screen previously, you won't be able to see any error messages that appear on the screen. So you don't 
don't want to remove that. Conversely, you might want to leave uh, add that to the other terminals in case you want to retain what's on there. But generally, it's probably a security thing to not leave that sort of stuff on the screen. So if that's an issue for you, you might not want to add that on. Uh, a bit about run levels, UDEV scripts. Um, next thing we need to do is to configure the system clock. Again, it's probably quicker just to copy this paste it in and then edit it. Um, if you're normally if you're dual booting a machine, especially if it's with a Windows setup, then um, you need to set this to zero because Windows stores the time in the hardware clock on the on the machine uh, in local time, but Linux stores the uh, time uh, using GMT or UTC as it's now known. So being as the intention is that the, the Mac will have only Linux from scratch, ultimately will only have a Linux from scratch on, you probably want to leave that as a one to indicate that it's using um, GMT or uh, UTC time. And as it says here, if there's any other parameters you want to send to HW clock, then you can add them on on that line, but you don't normally need to do that for Intel machines or Intel based machines, Intel processor based machines. Next one we've got is configuring the console. Um, so this always throws because there's no examples for GB. There's lots of examples of different countries. Um, so it's something you'll have to investigate if you're not GB. Um, US, I guess, would have probably defaults. So you could probably leave it blank and it would work. But generally, you can see the format of the um, file. So I'm just going to get one up from another machine. And what I'll do is I'll just copy the first one and again just edit that. So edit this etc says config console. First thing I normally do is add in. There's another setting there above um, this one here, log level, which defines uh, what sort of kernel mes messages get dumped to the screen. And if you don't add or change the default, which is uh, I can't remember if it's four or five. Oh, it's level seven. Sorry. So you get quite a few messages coming up. Um, then you'll be working and just have random messages appearing from the kernel, kernel telling you stuff. I believe these kernel messages do get sent to a log file anyway, so it's not important to have them coming up on the screen. So what I do is I set log level a little bit lower and I set it to three, which is fine. You'll just get the high level messages appearing on, on the terminal if there are any, um, and any of the medium to lower level messages, as I say, still get logged in a in a log file. So key map is one I need to change. That looks like that's a Poland, but a Polish key key map. So I, for UK, I change it to UK. And then the font, I change it to 2-16. That's quite a nice font. Uh, lat one works as well, and there's a few others um, you can try. And then because UK is Western Europe, this needs to be changed to a one. Um, so obviously whatever country you're in and whatever locale you need to um, investigate what these settings should be. So I'll just set that. Yeah, as I say, it has got a few examples there, so you can probably crib from that and get an idea of what um, you yeah, maybe you should be setting it to. Um, Yeah, there's a bit here about syslogd script, um, about configuring that. I don't normally touch that at all. Uh, and then there's this rcsite.site file, which has got various parameters for starting up and so on. Um, I don't think there's actually any settings set by default in there. They're all commented out. But... Um, it's just printed here for information. It already exists. Um, so if needed, you can 
alter that. Bash shell start files. So we can find out what locale we are by running this command. And you can see there's all these locales that are created um, mainly for allowing tests to pass. Um, probably wouldn't need all of these, but the two that I need are these ones, and in particular, this is the one that I'll be using ENGB ISO 88591. And you can see that ties up with, well, remember I changed this to 8859 1, so you can see that's all related. And what we do now is we run this command here and replace locale name with one of these locales that's just come up on the screen. So I find the one that I want, which is this one here, paste that in there, press enter, and I get this response, ISO 8-885-1. And that's what I need to use to configure the ETC profile down here. You can run these other commands to get other information about that particular locale to find out what language, the character map and so on. So for example, um, if I wanted to know what the uh, language was, I could type in language. Uh, sorry, locale. Locale language, there you go, and it says British English. Um, I could do the other ones as well, I guess. So, Great Britain pound. And lastly, the international prefix is the dialing code. So this should return 44 for the UK. And there it is. So it's just ways to confirm that you've picked a, a locale that's suitable for your needs. But this is the bit that's important now because we need to use that the output of the char map parameter for this um, script here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that much, paste it in, scroll back, uh, sorry, where was it there? I'll double, double click that, paste that in. Um, so that's, uh, sorry, beg your pardon. I need to rub that out. I need to put in the language and the country code. So the language is EN which is the first part of the original code that I picked, so ENGB. So it's basically this bit here is what goes in here, LL underscore CC. So the language is EN English, the country is GB. So for example, also we've got English HK for Hong Kong. So the language is still English, but the country code is HK. So I paste that in, I put in the full stop here, then the char map is this bit here that I need to copy after the full stop and then any other modifiers which will have an at symbol plus the modifier no more modifiers that I need so I'll just copy from the end of that to the EOF file and that should be okay I'll just check that to make sure that it looks okay and yeah that looks fine that does I'm exporting a lang environment variable with the contents en underscore gb dot iso dash eight eight five nine dash one next we've got an input rc file which defines some key sequences some codes for keys and move on and the next one is the etc shells file so this is just a way of telling anybody which wishes to look at this file what what um, shell environments are available to use on the system. So there's always a default, and that default will point to a um, shell program. And the only one we've got at the moment is Bash, so that, that bin sh will be a symlink pointing to Bash, which we can look at. So there you are, you can see it's pointing to bash, and so bash is going to be the default uh, script whenever we refer to SH. Obviously if you install in BLFS, there's other shells, I think there's ZSH and CSH, I think, off the top of my head. 
So if you decide to install them, you can add them to the shells file and maybe even, if, if it's your preferred shell, redirect sh um, to that one. Although generally it seems that most shell scripts use bash, although not always. 